Hi, how are you? I am well. It is summer. The sun is out. It's been raining for days and weeks. Um, so that's all all good. And uh, I saw your post uh, on, on LinkedIn and, and thought that would be a really good topic uh, to talk about today. So why don't you take it from here? Sure. So um, long story short, we were out in Hawaii and we had new paddle boards, um, this cool one that like you can put these blow up things on it to make a kayak out of. Um, and I had purchased it because um, sometimes the water is a little bit rough and I, you know, may, may not feel comfortable. Um, and Tom flies back and forth from Hawaii. So I'm not always there uh, with someone. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe on those days I'd feel more comfortable kayaking versus um, paddle boarding. And um so we purchased these brand new boards. I'm all excited to put it out on the water. We take our maiden voyage and I'm using it as a paddleboard because, you know, things that are more than one thing typically are good at one thing and not at the other, <laughs> but I wanted to try this out. And so we go out paddling and I proceed to fall, not <laughs> once, but three times, every time, like I think our total time was like 22 minutes or 24 minutes. Every time I'm like hauling myself back up, the water is probably, you know, 20 feet deep where we're, where we're at and I'm falling and it's happy. hauling myself back up, hats all array, my <laughs> are all spotted and I'm like getting back up. Um, and I just really felt down on myself. It's like, Oh, like, Oh, I, thought I was really doing well on the yoga. I thought I was doing well on my balance. I've been keeping up with my fitness, like just sucks. Like I feel like my paddleboard skills have just like getting older sucks. Um, you lose things. And so we go in and for the rest of the week, I decide to use my paddleboard because I'm like, well, let's, let's use it as a kayak, right? If I can't paddle, then if I can't paddleboard, then I can kayak. And which is good because a couple of those days they were rough as a, as a kayak, it's really good. It's really good. Okay. Um, super fun. Uh, like having a great time still in the water, right? Cause yeah. I just love So you picked an alternative. It's that's working too. And so loving the paddleboard, I uh, love the kayak portion of the paddleboard. So then Tom's sister comes out. Um, and now there's three of us, right? So, um, I, we go out on our own. Um, I think Tom was working that day. We go out on our own and out of sheer laziness, I didn't want to, like there was a single paddleboard in the paddleboard stand and then there's a double paddleboard. And I was like, well, I'm not going to rejigger. Like I'll just bring out the two, two paddleboards. Um, and I had really been resistant to trying the paddleboard again, mainly because um, I kind of broke my toe by stubbing it on a tree like midweek and it was one of those things like you, I hit the tree and I heard the crunch. So it's not great. <laughs> but so I'm getting I, pain right now. Ow. <laughs> numb toe on the right foot, like the big toe, and then yeah. the broken so I'm like not great. So we take the paddle boards that um our normal paddle boards out. Um and I'm teaching. Uh, his sister Julia, how to paddleboard, like how to stand up and da da da. And I'm amazing. Like I get up, I'm able, like I'm able to like control myself and get back to where she is so that I can give her some more instruction. Um, Cause she's new. So she's falling off and blah, blah, blah. And like, and, and we paddleboard for a long time. I never fall down that first time. And I'm like, oh, conditions must just have been different, you know, so weird. And then um, second day, Tom's out on the other paddleboard, the one that, the compact switch, the one that goes to the kayak and he's paddleboarding on it. Like he's, he's paddleboarding on it. And he's like, yeah, it's a little tippier, but he's, you know, doing a great job paddleboarding on it. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's weird. And I proceed to, you know, kayak on the, on the compact switch and to paddleboard on the paddleboard for the rest of the month. And our last couple of days that were there, um, I think it was like the day before we left, um, I'm paddleboarding on, on our normal paddleboards and um, I'm doing a great job. I've, again, not fallen off the paddleboard since that first time, Wow! like the entire time. 
And, you know, there's, there's a lot of time to reflect when you're out there. And I'm like, you know what? It's the board. Mm -hmm. Not board skills. It's the board. And at that point in time, Tom like comes up to me, paddles up to me and he's like, you know, your, your skill, you, you've gotten back all of your skills that you had lost. And I was like, no, I had the skills. The board was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I began to like reflect on that and how often we blame ourselves mm -hmm. about I'm bad. Mm -hmm. My skills aren't good. I've lost it. I am not working hard enough. Even though the environment has changed, mm -hmm. all I needed to do was go back to that other board, right? I could have done it the second day, but I was like, I was bummed about my skills, right? I was bummed about me not. So I'll just sit, right? I'll just, I'll right. be in the and I'll sit, yeah. um, which is, not as good of a workout. It's not as fun. I mean, it's fun, but it's not as fun as paddle boarding. Um, and I, and I felt down about myself because I couldn't paddle board. And so I was just reflecting on how many times in an environment we begin to, to look inward, which is in a way noble, right? We're, we're looking for what we can change about ourselves to, to get with the environment. But in a way, it's also, no, like be confident in your skills and um, still, you know, get, get out there and find the environment, find the paddleboard. Find the environment. Yeah. Or the you. tool. Yeah. Or the yeah. resource that's going to keep you right. successful. Exactly. Um, and I was sitting down with a, a friend of mine yesterday and we were talking about how we often let other people, their opinions define us. Mm -hmm. And she made this point, um, a group of hers is, uh, that she's worked with in the past um, has a new leader and that leader doesn't think they're very good. Oh. And she's sitting down with, with them and she's like, this person who we met six months ago does not define us, does not, you know, we are not bad because this person thinks we're bad. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were fantastic beforehand. Right. <laughs> we were doing just fine. Just six um, months ago, we were fantastic. Now right. how are we terrible? Yeah. Someone who's known us for six months cannot define us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just that's, what's been rolling around in my head recently is why do we continue to, to feel smaller about ourselves, to feel worse about ourselves, to discount what we bring to the table when we just need a different paddleboard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder what your thoughts are, or have you experienced that in your, in your past? I have definitely experienced it in all kinds of ways. And I, you know, I've got coaches who are bringing up similar concerns. Um, the why, you know, I, I guess we're all trained from childhood to try to be part of community and listen to authoritarian you know, figures and yeah, for all good reason. Um, and, you know, there is risk there, there is risk not to listen. So I've experienced it when I'm from small town, I go work in larger places in the back of my mind. I'm always thinking I'm small town. I can have a Southern accent at times. I, I, you know, um, and I have had evaluations by people saying I don't dress the way I should, or I don't control my hair the way I should, or, um, I'm too direct or I'm pushing too hard or I'm not listening. Um, and what happens in my situations are, or I used to, I would listen to that feedback and that feedback alone and get pretty tied up in it, um, and get 
take it too personally. And then I would think about whether I had to give credit to that feedback or discredit that feedback or whether it was that personal thing. So for example, you know, the, some of the dress stuff um, came from feedback of a board and it came from feedback of the board chair during evaluation and the board chair was a, a nun, Catholic health system. She called me a clothes horse, a clothes horse under my her breath many times as I was walking by, and I figured out what she was saying. But in my performance evaluation, it came out that I I just wasn't dressing appropriately, and I got ticked off. I'm like, hey, who are you? Who is this board? I'm this small town girl from Boonville, Indiana. All I'm doing is dressing. I, I had the audacity to wear red every now and then. I had the audacity to, you know, try to be trendy. Um, and, and yet, you know, I was in my, well, at that time I was in my twenties, so I, I wasn't going to dress like an old nun. <laughs> I just wasn't, nor would I ever. It's just not my personality, nor am I Catholic, or was I Catholic at the time? Um, so now I think about if I had just stepped back and recognized, yes, it came from her, but the bigger picture is I had joined a Catholic organization with thousands of years of history. Mm -hmm. And even if you're doing your damnedest to look professional and work hard and do the right things, if you don't look the part that they expect you to look, then you're viewed as a rebellious teenager, mm -hmm. even when you don't mean to. Um, then I've had instances where I've gone to work at different places and heard it's a physician led culture, physician led, physician led, great. I'm not a physician, um, but I would defer to physicians in cases and they would do some mean, ornery, obstinate stuff. Like one started a rumor that I was having an affair with him. Yeah. So again, naively, did I try to hit that up front? Did I try to talk about it professionally? Did I take it up to HR? No, I just kind of took it personally and thought, I'm just going to, you know, make it super clear. I'm not having an affair with anyone, nor ever would I. And I made it clear that I was when I would meet with him, I would have other people around and thought I covered my bases fully. Um, but new CEO comes into town to run the health system. Rumor got out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was asked to leave that position. Um, I was mortified. You know, I did absolutely nothing wrong. Never, ever, ever. Nothing. I got duped, though. Um, he asked if he could throw me a going away luncheon with some other male physicians. And I was like, sure, that'd be nice. Uh, concluded lunch. He says, hey, you know, let me walk you out. Uh -oh. Walk outside, turn my, you know, open my car door. He grabs me and gives me a big kiss on the lips and then smiles at all the other physicians who happen to be sitting by the big picture window. <sighs> so... You have to understand the big picture and the environment, not just the little personal stuff, uh, little relationship things. Um, and, and that's what I try to, to coach my client is when you hear or when you know the culture or you know what environment you're swimming in, <laughs> yeah. you, you have to get the right tools that will have you be most successful even if it, it's not, you know, what you necessarily would want to, I'm sure you wanted to be successful in the new switch model. Yeah, totally. Um, I wanted to be successful. I want to be successful in any environment. In anything, I'm in. in anything. You want to take on the new, you want to learn, 
um, it, it just, you gotta be aware that some of this stuff is just so powerful, so cultural, so ingrained. And, and I keep getting back to you. So many of my coaches are like, I'm working so hard and I'm doing all the right stuff and I'm doing everything I'm being asked to do. It, great. It may not be sufficient because you're swimming with sharks or you're swimming in this culture that you may just not quite fit into, or the way you approach it is, is leaving you susceptible to being played and toyed with or being made a fool of or whatever. So I agree with you. If deep down, deep down in my gut, in both of those instances, I knew something wasn't right. <laughs> something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And nobody was telling me what wasn't quite right to my face. Yeah. Um, so when your gut is telling you something's not quite right, um, listen to it and then figure out, you know, do you want to change what you're doing or what tools you're using or how you're communicating or who you're communicating with to try to resolve it as quickly as possible? Um, or is it time to do something else? Um, because there are some places and some people and teams you just might not ever fit in with. And that's okay. It that's doesn't okay. bad. Right. Or feels not worthy. Right. Right. Because they're out of that environment or they're not welcome in that environment. Right. Your direct might be someone's, is someone else's refreshing point of view. Exactly. Your I occasionally wear red to the office is someone else's, oh, we can really be ourselves here. Yeah. I don't know what to say about the dude who lied. That's just, that's just bad. That's bad shit. <laughs> bad <laughs> shit all around. Um, but be aware of your environment. Like, are you ever going to change an environment where that's fun for a man or a woman to pretend that something is going on? No, mm -mm. and cut your losses and go find yourself a different paddleboard. Go, go find a different paddleboard. Find yourself a different environment to apply your skills with because ultimately that environment doesn't deserve the skills you bring. Right. And sometimes I think we beat ourselves up because we want to be good in every single situation. We want to be successful in every single situation. And that's, of course, of course, right? Of course. We want everyone to like us. We want everyone to say, yay, you're doing great. Absolutely. I would, I would much rather have a unanimous panel of 10 people tell me that I'm amazing and awesome. Absolutely. But I'm also, because we are so prone to look for lions and tigers and bears, if one person on that panel of 10 says, oh, I really think you're shitty, where does my focus go? But that one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your, and all of a sudden matters more than the other nine. Mm -hmm. why, do we do that? why do we do that? Because human nature says you go look for the negative. Yeah. I already feel a little bit wobbly about my skill set. That one panel judge says, nope, I agree. Oh my gosh. Well, those nine people are wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing to believe the nine people. I'm choosing to believe them. And I'm choosing to believe my gut instinct and I'm choosing to actually take the feedback, but not take it personally. Yeah. You know, there might be something in that 10th judge, right. That is valuable for me to take. Right. And so I have this whole like visualization of feedback. I put it in a bowl and I look at it and I choose the, I pluck the thing out that I, that I think is, is a good way to use, but I don't choose to identify myself with that 10th person. Right. I mean, those other nine who said up until six months ago, I was amazing. Yes. Yes. And that 10th person actually has more courage, guts, and integrity than maybe the other nine for at least bringing something up that doesn't follow the message that the rest of the crowd is trying to give you. Could be. Maybe. And so I would much rather sometimes hear negative. Um, and as you said, then explore it and ask, you know, what do you really mean by that? Because most of the time they're not saying you're a hundred percent terrible. <laughs> if you really sit down and are able to get to it, um, you might get to, okay, here's what I think you could improve. Um, 
And you, and you, unfortunately, that doesn't happen a lot. It's so much easier for people to talk about you behind your back or wait till the annual performance review and shock the hell out of you with super negative stuff. And again, if that kind of stuff is allowed in an environment, then maybe holistically, that's just not the right environment for you. Yeah. And I mean, it feels weird to say in this day and age, like, or in this particular moment in time, like go find another job, but you can continue to work in the job that you're in while you explore opportunities for other environments that might be conducive to your skill set mm -hmm. in a much more positive way. Yes. And that sounds really scary. And sometimes it is, right? And you might go and jump to another one where, you know, you're still, you know, not quite a hundred percent. That's okay. These relationships do not have to last a lifetime. Coming yeah. from someone who's been 21 years at a company, mm -hmm. relationships should probably not last 21 years. Exactly. 21 years is too long to be mm -hmm. with one company. Yeah. Right. You get a, you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of fear for new things when you're with, I was going to say someone, because sometimes it feels like, you know, a bad breakup, but, um, you know, you get it, having more experience that you can look back on and say, you know, Hey, that environment wasn't great for me, but this one I'm really thriving in. Oops, this environment's changing and I'm not thriving in it anymore. Okay. I'm going to make an informed decision and go find another environment that, likes my red dress, that likes my direct um, feedback, that enjoys the fact that sometimes a goofball, mm -hmm. that wants a leader that is you know, not a physician, because mm -hmm. there's plenty of places out there. There's plenty of places out there. And I like what you said about, you know, keeping what you have while starting to look. Um, sometimes just remembering networking, networking, networking. You don't have to officially apply. You don't have to officially hire a recruiter or answer a recruiter's con connection calls, but just be out there networking with your colleagues. Well, That's the way people, most people find the next thing anyway. Well, and that way you can begin to explore what is different out there. Right. You can talk to someone who's at that company and be like, this is the craziness I'm dealing with. What, what's it like when you're there? Uh-huh. Yes, it's not into red dresses. <laughs> like, what's it like? Exactly. What's it really, really, really like? Yeah. Yeah. With people you can trust. <laughs> yeah. People saying stuff to your face. People not saying stuff. Like, what's the politics like? Mm -hmm. You can start to understand that. And then decide, okay, well, is this a place where, is this the paddle board that, that's going to use my, my skills in a way that makes us all successful? Mm -hmm. Or not. <laughs> go find another one. Yeah, go find another one and give it time. It doesn't have to be immediate. And just trust that the skills that you have yeah. have disappeared over the last six months. Yeah, that's important. You got to boost, reboost your own confidence know what's true and experiment yes. right? if I had gotten back on that other paddleboard I'd still feel like I, I just I can't yeah. paddleboard you would have left and been telling yourself a lie that you can't paddleboard anymore your skills were gone yeah I guess I just lost them age can't paddleboard anymore just kayaking mm -hmm. me. but no nope, get back out there and experiment with a lot of different tools to see which one works for you yeah great well, thank you. That's a great message, Kate. And it's so on topic. Yeah, so people, on topic. So many people are dealing with this skills mismatch or culture mismatch and not all cultures are the same. So we have to explore. We have to figure out what's going to make us thrive in the environment. Agree. And I just saw an article yesterday that the quiet quitting is stopping and people aren't quitting, not because everything's perfect, although things have improved in some job markets, but because people are scared, scared to leave. The economy is not great. You know, the job postings aren't great. Um, and uh, I just do not stop yourself due to fear. Just keep getting out there. Keep telling yourself what you're great at. Find other people who can boost you up. And, be, and still build your skills. Let's still build your skills. Right? 
hit the yoga on Monday morning, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. got to make sure that you're still skilling up for what you want to do. You're still making sure that you're at the top of your game. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Culture that is conducive to you thriving. Love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Talk Have soon. a good one. Bye-bye.